My name's Christian Langeter and I'm an equine soft tissue therapist. I specialise in treating muscular issues in performance horses. Hi, I'm, I'm volu about volume two, oh, episode two. We made it through the first one. I keep forgetting to look at We made it through the first one. Hi, welcome back. Um, hope you enjoyed the first one. Who knows if it was good. Anyway, look, uh, uh, it was it was new, it was interesting. We're going to give it another crack. So, um, yeah, welcome to episode two. Um, I guess we just kind of get into it, shall we? Oh, no, actually, before we get it, I'm always distracted. Before we get into it, congratulations to Greg Urell, who won race three today, or four, and Renee, Ryan and Schiffer, who was on number one with the horse that, anyway, um, Rick's Cafe. Rick's Cafe won today, just won race seven. Um, well done. How cool is that? So anyway, so we've got two winners. You saw the other one today, and so Sandown, race seven, Rhiannon, fucking awesome. So cool. I'm so happy for you. Anyway. There you go. Let's get on with it. Right. So this is Nicky Petresta's horse. It's a little Sammy. Now Sammy is a dressage pony and he actually competes against the big guys. Um, and he's a Chris and George into one horse. What I wanted to show you him before we go. So so um, this is a little horse that competes in dressage as it said Nicky Petesta's horse. Um, he competes against the big warm bloods. Like, so he's against the, the massive guys. I reckon that's really impressive. And we're talking about into one uh, Grand Prix, I think I said it could have been Pre St. George. So we're talking Olympic level kind of horse here. Um, and he's just like a cute little pony. But he does well and he um, embarrasses a lot of big horses. So, like, anyway, Kate <laughs> Gandra, I just had to put in. Now he's got the but. What you can see that little twitch is actually this muscle here. I don't know if you can you know, try to try and hang it a bit. So I've just done a video on the pec, which is the descending pec, which is this one. And he's not sore in the pec at all. He's not sore through the neck, but he's got this little thing here. And that is the bicep, that's this one. So that pulls the muscle up. So if you're checking, if you've got a horse that's shuffling in front, check this. You can check through the neck or check this. <coughs> These are two different muscles. Now I'm just going to do my thing. Now he's also flipped here in Australia with flip because if you're in this weather when it's cold, if they're wet, they can get skin conditions. Uh, but we keep the saddle pad to stop the saddle from running on their back where it is clipped. So, it was a bit wild, but the, other, the main reason why I wanted to show it is I just wanted to show you how to check this one. Now, on the pet, <coughs> on the pet, naughty horse. On the pet, you, you actually check from that hip sternum point and roll through the chest. On this one, you <coughs> come through this crease and roll across the fibers. And if you get a reaction, check that. Now, again, massage it, use massage gun, use cream, use anything. I do my version, don't worry about that. But that's why I said Thank you. So that was really superficial, right? So um, even though it was really small, I, I remembered doing it and I thought, oh man, this is just, is, whenever I film, it's really, I don't know if it shows up on camera. So I may, uh, make sure that <coughs> I hurt the horse so you can, no, I make sure that I'm really sure that you can see it on camera. It's very difficult sometimes. Um, Couple of interesting things that I say on this. Uh, here in Australia, we clip horses, um, which means basically what happens is if we rug them, we clip them because if you wash them and they're wet, we can get fungal infections and stuff in the skin. So the coat doesn't dry out properly, we get fungal stuff. And so that's why you see this little patch on, on him. Um, we are obviously in a garage. Um, so, so that was one. Uh, the second, I'm trying to think of what the, there was a point that I was trying to, that I wanted to make. Um, but that was uh, the first one. Secondly, um, clearly the chest and the bicep are separate. Um, it was really superficial, but you saw, oh yeah, the thing that I wanted to talk about that I just, is you see him licking and chewing. Now I have a thing about, uh, what we call releases. So, um, very commonly releases are, um, when a horse apparently has a release after you've treated a particular muscle. 
A lot of therapists say, oh my God, look at that, he's licking and chewing. Now, the reason why I'm not really keen on those is because I work in a lot of really big professional stables. The big professional stables, like Jim Mason at Greg Urell, as we, anyway, um, if I went to Jim, as an example, and Jim said, all right, mate, we are going to a group, whatever, even, even a, like a city race, even a weekday race, we want you to look at one of our horses, and I go and have a look at it, and he goes, how'd you go? And I say to him, well, it yawned three times, and it licked a few times, and it started chewing. Um, it ain't going to cut it. So um, do I think it's a release of sorts? Absolutely. I think that the horse is going into a parasympathetic state because we have sympathetic and, and parasympathetic nervous states. So when you have a massage or when I treat stuff, absolutely. Does he go into a state and start doing that? Sure. Um, but I don't hang my hat on as soon as I've treated it because it could have been something that I treated about five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, that is kind of processing, or it could just be the horse going into a zone. I think it's like meditation. People say like fight, flight, rest and digest, and like all, all releases licking and chewing. So he does that. I It could have been the bicep that I fixed, and people will go, oh, yeah, wow, well, look, you treated the bicep, and he's licking and chewing. It could also have been his hamstrings that were also sore that I didn't show you on the video. So when you see releases, don't think that you've actually fixed anything. I'd like to have a bit of a mind shift whereby they're going into parasympathetic state, um, which is awesome and I love it and I think it's chilled and cool and people think I ace their horses all the time because they go into a zone. But that's that's my point. It just means that they're going into kind of like a meditative state. So, and it, sorry, Drew, sorry. And it's also when they're the most dangerous because if you have a horse that is really frightened and goes into that zone because they can only be in the fight flight or that parasympathetic state. If you put them in there from massaging them and all of a sudden you think they're safe and you get a bit too close and personal, whenever they come out of it, they can be quite explosive. So um, be careful if the horse goes into that state. If you're a therapist, be mindful because um, they can come out explosively and that's when shit happens. Anyway, thanks, Drew. <laughs> Uh, hi, we're at Greg Rail Racing. Ah, Greg Rail, um, Jim. Spring's starting to happen, it's not spring yet, but it's close. The tracks are drying out, so what's happening is the horses are starting to go from using their fronts to using their rears again. So if you're checking your horse, you're around here, you're checking your horse, and you get that. This is a sensitive little good fella. Um, anyway, if you get that, this property line here, this is bicep stemorous. You can kind of see what I did with my fingers there. You can just check it by just gripping onto it, right? So this is this whole big muscle through here. It also goes down into here, and you can see, obviously, stifle. Um, but, so check that. As I said, this one's a little bit sensitive. I'm gonna have a chat. Um, so, um, <coughs> in Australia, we call, um, where that line is that I keep on um, showing my fingers along, we call it the poverty line. Effectively, we call it the poverty line reason we call it that is because if you don't feed them you see the line or you know when horses are like really as in racing they like to say rock hard fit you will really see that line so it's affectionately called the poverty line um so i i you know when i'm actually palpating all i'm palpating on that uh, all i'm doing is i'm just putting pressure in with my fingers um there's nothing in my fingers etc etc and also this teardrop muscle down the bottom here, um, there's a, if you go to my TikTok, there's a, a really good video of a grey horse and I'm in Flinders and the sky is awesome and everything. There's And I'm checking that teardrop muscle. It's the caudal part of the biceps femoris. Um, now that is just the extension or the caudal part means the end of, or close to the tail, but the end of that bit there, it becomes a couple of different muscles. When that's sore, often you have stifle issues. So what I do is that's when you saw me, I do the whole biceps femoris and then I actually do that caudal part, which is a teardrop. That can be sore independently of up high. So if you check it, as I say with the grey horse, be really careful. They will kick your face off. It is a, like a really, like that, this is a muscle that you will get hurt checking. So be mindful. Um, and seeing I'm... Uh, like very much about educating owners rather than therapists. I mean, therapists are going to get a bunch out of this. Vets too. I work with a lot of vets. Um, but this is for normal people. I'm trying to make this stuff as unintimidating as possible. So this is why we're doing this. So...
carry on. Yes, mate. We'll do that teardrop video episode three. People want to watch out for that. Awesome. Anyway, um, so if you get a dip right about here near sacrum, check this muscle here, biceps femoris. Just like I said, just rip it. I'm just going to do my thing and concentrate. Sorry about the moving point. So I treat it up here, you can massage that whole muscle. I treat it up here and it extends all the way back, all the way down. So biceps femoris, give it a check on your own horse and see how you go. Especially if you are all right. racing and <coughs> excuse the coughing. Especially if you are racing and you're working properly, which means working collected, not hollow, or dressage and you're starting to really work them from the rear. Um, the other one would be um, cart horses. So um, dressage, that biceps femoris muscle is one of the most common uh, racing. I like to see it in racing as opposed to hamstrings because it means that the, the track work is actually working them properly and collecting them, holding them and not letting them just go like hollow in the back and using their bodies as two different parts of the horse. Yep. Thought I'd put that on airplane mode. I did. And with Archie, this is a little thing you can do for your horse just in case you think oh, to check if the shoulders are okay. Um, just so Drew you know, likes the this one. Spine actually goes <laughs> through here. The, that's their neck vertebrae through here. And weirdly enough, they have as many vertebrae as we have. So they've got seven, we've got seven in the cervical area. What I want to do is I want to show you how to open this shoulder up. Only do this once a month or so, right? So. If you go to the middle, you're going to feel, it's easier if they tilt their head towards you, you're going to feel a little bit of the shoulder here. Now you're going to be surprised how much this opens up, right? So that's the actual shoulder. All I'm doing is making sure that this shoulder muscle is not stuck to the neck. And you can just rock it. Um, and just, all what I do is I roll it and pull it over. So what I'm doing is opening up the connective tissue between the shoulder and the neck. I'll do it again. Now, sometimes you're going to hear like a suction cup sound. Basically, all that means is that the fascia from the shoulder has glued to the neck. So, if you want a free moving neck and free moving shoulders, just pull that open. Go gently, feel around. If you have a difficulty doing it, you might have a sore neck, either serratus or lower neck through here. But give it a crack on your hooks. Cool. I like this one. So, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, <clears throat> uh, there is, I'm going to start with. There is a YouTube video called Within Nature's Giants, and it's a, a basically a, a, a dissection of a horse. And what they do is they get a dead horse and they move its head up and down. So it's laying on a table and they move the neck up and down and the lungs actually move. I've got the blowout. Anyway, the lungs actually move. So what it shows is that horses don't necessarily breathe while they run, they draw. So they kind of open up their airways and use their neck like bellows, right? So if you've got a racehorse and all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's got a sore neck, who cares? Or it's got a sore shoulder, who cares? Fact is, if you've got a free moving neck, you've got better breathing. So what happens then is if you have a sore shoulder, as we, we showed there, if you have a sore shoulder and it's inflamed and the fascia, which is the slippery stuff, like everywhere in your body that's slippery, these are going to be like... Google fascia, um, especially if you're an osteopath or a yoga person or the, you know, the Fascial Congress in America, surgeons, etc. But fascia is the really slippery, um, webby looking stuff when you're ripping a chicken apart. As, a, as a, like an example, what happens is that's got fluid in it. If, if the shoulder or the neck become inflamed, they heat up. And what happens is the fascia dehydrates and it sticks to itself. And that's why I said in it, if you pull it and you hear a suction cup sound, all you're doing is you're opening up a fascial adhesion. And what that means is if the shoulder is stuck to the neck, you basically like sucked it off. So uh, the, the shoulder will rip off the neck, so to speak. Um, and then you're going to have a free moving neck again because it's not restricted by the shoulder. So once you've got that, all of a sudden you've got a lot better breathing. So um, that was one of the main points. I've forgotten the other point right now because I'm getting distracted. Um, but anyway, um, we'll keep going. But seriously, within Nature's Giants, have a look at it. it. It's fascinating. They show a few other different things. And it's all about horses, a big dissection. It's so, well, I think it's cool. You might not. Anyway, <laughs> thanks, Drew.
We're still in a puzzle at Durabon. Puzzle. Um, Joe Rabin, Dur I never know how to say it, but it's a, it's a writing school, writing place, uh, adjustment mm. centre. Um, so we're getting a lot of things going on with saddles at the moment. If you're in Melbourne, you've got a horse and you've got a saddle issue and you think it's actually the saddle, be mindful right now because while the coats are changing, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, we're changing from winter into spring, um, be mindful, their coats are starting to grow. So what happens is they're getting really sensitive skin. And if you have something like this that looks really horrible, what it actually is, we're just being helpful a friend, what it actually is, the difference that you can tell if it's the back or the saddle is, if I actually push the muscle um, in the back, you can see that there's not really a reaction, like if I'm pushing on the muscle, Anywhere, there's no real reaction. But if I scratch his skin, you can see that the connective tissue is annoyed. Yeah, I'm ready. So this is a um, an example of um, diagnosis by omission. So um, there is a whole bunch of stuff in here. When I check it back, I, I call this part of well further back. I call it my Pandora's box. There are so many different connections from um, all different parts of the horse into that lumbar spine area. So, <coughs> so um, with this particular one, lower back, it could be kissing spine. So we're looking if it's structural, it could be muscular. So we're looking at muscle. It could be skin or skin sensitivity, which is saddle. So we're looking for that. And it could also be hind gut. So it could be organ. So we're trying to determine as an example, if you've got a, a sore lower back um, and, and you're saying, look, I've got a sore lower back. I don't know which one it is. This sort of stuff, and I have to go it over and over and over again, and I get a lot of um, comments saying that you can't diagnose kissing spine, you can't diagnose hide and gut. Um, yes, you can. <laughs> anyway, if this is the beginning of a conversation, right? So if it is structural and it's not muscular, and I rock the structure, then the, and there's, there's a problem, it's going to react. If it's muscular and I push the muscle, it's going to react. If it is saddle and the the skin is annoyed or it's bruised or the, the superficial fascia on the back is annoyed, it's going to be like that's a saddle. And if it's going to be organ, it's going to be in that little sweet spot there and that's going to be hind gut. So I already know roughly what I'm looking at. So that determines whether you need a saddle fitter, a vet, or just some medication or a soft tissue therapist. So muscle, soft tissue, therapist, structure, vet, um, hind gut, probably vet, but I'd start with a thing called Equishore, which I've spoken about before. Skin, see your saddle fitter. All it means is see that person first. And we're diagnosing by way of doing the thing that's least invasive and, and seeing how we go from there. Because there's no point in having an x-ray if all you've got is a little bit of sensitive skin from your saddle not fitting properly. So let's go least invasive, and let's check which one it is, because if it's not gut, then it's not gut. So, anyway. The skin is annoyed, the superficial fascia is really pissed off. If I did the same thing on just normal skin, you can see there's no problem. But as soon as I go to the back... There's a the point so, about having um, inflammation in the connective tissue. Much like I was talking about the fascia in the shoulder, the, the superficial connective tissue is here. It could also be change of coat right now because we're coming into spring, as I said before in the video. Um, we're changing coat, uh, getting in ho ingrown hairs, etc., is pretty common, and it's mostly common under where there's pressure, like the saddle. So it may not be the saddle that's ha having a problem. It may be the skin, the coat coming through. And as I said, the easiest way is to scratch it really lightly. So you saw me scratch the shoulder really lightly, or actually fairly firmly. Nothing happened. But as soon as I came up to where the saddle is. Um, then we saw a reaction. There's different patterns to that as well, but for the sake of keeping everything simple, we'll just leave it at that. What that lets me know is that the skin is annoyed. It's actually not the muscular stuff. So it's not so much the saddle. It's the saddle shifting on the coat that's coming through. So if you're thinking that you need to change your saddle, just pause for a minute because it's a phase. It's going to change. So uh, just check. See if it's maybe you apply pressure if it's sore. If you scratch it and it's sensitive, then don't change your saddle yet. Yeah, thanks. It's really interesting because the next one we're going to go to is another one in that area, which I recently filmed, um, and it's going to be a completely different thing. So we're going to omit the saddle, we're going to omit kissing spine, and we're going to go straight for the hind gut. <coughs> Ready? <laughs> Ready. <laughs> cool.
<laughs> Technical um, difficulties. Where are you? This huh? is Mr. I've done a uh, video with this guy before. Now we had a saddle fitter in who suspected or did. Why are you worried? Are you alright? That's fine. Okay, Why sorry guys, we're just. Right. Anyway, um, <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to do a quick video to show you uh, what's actually going on with him. He's. Um, you can see that that's a. It really is so weird video. watching yourself that's on TV. Really good. That'll be this one. He's also it's got biceps and tremorous, which. Um, which is just back here and a little bit in the hamstring. The point, the part that I'm watching... You realise people are watching you watching yourself on TV. How, how weird is that? I know, I know. And I realise from watching me watching myself that I have, like, especially with my breathing, because I'm allergic to horses, I have a lot of uh, face stuff. So, sorry, anyway. I'm still suspecting he used to have um, gut issues. We're coming into spring. I think he's still got gut issues. So when I tuck into that hollow, I'm going to show you. I'm going to do two things. I'm just keep filming from here, but I'm going to do two things. I'm going to show you when I tuck into the hollow, and I'm going to show you, show you what I do to see if it's pissing fine or not. So if I look over here, I'm going for this hollow part, and I'm pushing. You can see that he actually doesn't like it. Now, can we pause here for a sec? Before I want to do before before we. Get to the <laughs> before, but, mm, um, I need a new jacket. Before we get to the kissing spine part, um, so that hollow hind gut, right? Um, so I, I want to break this down because I've had a lot of comments um, saying that, firstly, that's not hind gut. Um, other people are really grateful. Uh, the considerations here, obviously, as I said, the muscles. We're poking specifically for organ. That's where the hind gut is. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm going to mention a few vets here. James Vanner, who's an amazing man. Uh, Dr. James Vanner from Geelong. Oh, these are all from Geelong, oddly enough. Um, who was instrumental in uh, creating the stem cell research that we do for injecting stem cells into things. Um, he calls. He thinks that I can fix kissing spine with my hands. Now, the, the, <laughs> and so he thinks that's quite amazing. Fact is, we realise that it's actually not kissing spine. I'm fixing the muscle, or we're fixing the hind gut. So, like you know, so again, this is the Pandora's box. There are so many things here. It could be one of the pelvic muscles, but in this case, I was lucky enough to be able to isolate the gut. Then we have um, Kylie out of Barwon Equine. Uh, not so long ago, her horse had uh, kissing spine. She didn't tell me. She asked me to come in and have a look at her horse. Um, I went over it and just by palpating it, I pretty much told her what she spent a lot of money um, having the horse checked with um, for for kissing spine. The uh, well, and it had spinal changes. Like so, when I say kissing spine, I mean just some sort of change in the spine. It could be arthritis. It could be inflammation. It could be um, where it starts kissing. But anyway. Um, the other thing is with hind gut here in Australia, and I'm going to try to keep this fairly short. Um, Jörg Yandras, um, he's like an amazing vet. He's like really creative. Um, he's been through all the um, homeopathic side, etc. He thinks that what happens is that um, we get bot flies here. We think that the bot fly larva sticks to the wall of the intestine. When we worm them, they come out pretty violently. It causes holes in the gut. Um, because they pull a little hole in the gut. So the naturally occurring acid in the gut burns those holes. I've ripped open a few uh, um, intestines with him and had a look, and it looks like craters where those little holes can't properly heal. So what the Equishore does, it is, it's a, a bicarb-based product. It alkalizes the gut enough for those little lesions to heal, right? And it's the same if it's irritated or whatever. Um, first, what we do is least invasive first, we give um, the Equishaw, it alkalizes it. We do that for a while, heals the gut, then we get them off it and we see what we got. So that's hind gut in a kind of confusing, but not at all. Spine, <laughs> the spine is up here. You can actually feel the dorsal processes. They're right here. You can feel those. If I grab those and pull them towards me, if there's any changes between the spines, he'd be sensitive. So you can see, I'm doing that pretty firmly, and we don't have anything. But if I go into this hollow, we can still have something. So for the saddle fitters, not kissing spine, hide that. So I think we've got acidosis in the gut, and all we're going to do is give a thing called Equishaw, and we'll fix that up. I'll fix up the muscular stuff that I just wanted to show. That and that face. 
So I'm trying to get my little terms right because uh, people like to, you know, if I don't, if I say um, hind gut acidosis, uh, it could be ulcers, could be um, inflamed lining, it could be a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, when I say kissing spine or spinal changes, it means that there's something going. That's the spine. It kind of looks a bit like that, and. If there's any changes between or if they're rubbing, I, I often interchange from kissing spine to spinal changes. So is that the last one? That's the last one. That's about it. Um, thank you. I, I, you know, thanks for watching the first one. Thanks for watching the, the second one. Um, I, it's been really cool to see things going on in social media. Uh, like, you know, um, obviously this is on um, YouTube. On YouTube. Please check out my TikToks or even go to my Facebook page and have a look. Like, what do they like? Like, subscribe. Do that, please. That's what that'd be cool. Just follow this. Um, check out my TikTok stuff. Uh, I'll always do little videos and then we'll try to pull from as many of those as possible to make this um, possible. You're going to see the grey horse. Drew said these, we're going to do the grey horse where it had the caudal part of the biceps femoris. Um, really cool video. I, I love it. Um, it's a bit funny. Anyway, thank you so much. See you later. Thanks a lot.